Hey guys, Ryan Kershaw here from D'Angelico Guitars. I'm hanging out at the Sweetwater facility in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and we're gonna talk a little bit about this gorgeous instrument today and how it came to be. This is the deluxe Bob Weir Bedford signature model. So Bob Weir, as most of you know, is an American music legend in his own right, famous for being the rhythm guitar player in The Grateful Dead. And he's gone on to have an illustrious solo career as well. Bob's relationship with D'Angelico really began when the D'Angelico brand resurfaced and reignited in 2011, and Bob has always been a serious guitar enthusiast and knows his guitar history. Um, throughout his career, he's played a ton of different instruments. He's not uh, just one of those players who relies on one model. He has done the semi-hollow thing. He's done the co-design signature model thing, obviously solid bodies. He's really ventured out. Um, and in his solo career as well, he's, he's played acoustics and he's also played arch tops. And his fascination with arch tops and particularly with the legacy of John D'Angelico uh, led him to working with us. And he and I have had conversation after conversation about how to kind of carry on our legacy but do new things. And something that Bob is always doing, even though he's had a very long career at this point, is asking, where do we go next? So when Bob first joined the team at D'Angelico, we developed a custom version of our very popular semi-hollow, the SS. And it was a super cool guitar. Bob was uh, sort of the first reason that we started playing with tremolo arms and bringing the Bigsby into our product line. But even as we began working on that guitar, Bob had 10 other ideas in the chute ready to go. And shortly after I had the privilege of designing D'Angelico's first ever solid body line, as soon as Bob saw this body shape, the Bedford, he was flush with new ideas. Uh, one of the first ones that he came to us with was, why don't we put TV Jones in it? Why don't we see what it does with a brighter pickup? What do we see? Why can't we get it more articulate? Um, he was really searching for that acoustic edge that you get from a lot of three pickup models, but he was trying to get it into a humbucker formation or just a two pickup model. As we kept going in our design process, he stumbled across stacked P90s and he really liked the idea of a bright, bold pickup that also wouldn't have uh, that RF noise to it. And while Bob was playing these massive stages, that was a huge deal. Um, so that he could keep his output loud, he could have the single coil articulation, but he would have a way of combating that feedback. So through a long series of late night texts, early morning texts, the days of shows while Bob was on tour, um, we slowly started cobbling together the design of this guitar. And I am not exaggerating when I say that Bob had a new idea of the direction we should go in every day. Uh, his brain is tirelessly thinking about how to make the best instrument possible. I'm gonna walk you through what makes this guitar so versatile. We've got a three pickup setup on this guitar and three knobs, volume, tone, and blender, and a five-way toggle switch. But each of them has hidden features within. And this was born of Bob wanting to have his cake and eat it too, which in this case is an extremely good thing because it makes the guitar a Swiss Army knife. We got a Seymour Duncan stacked P90 in the neck, a Lawler Blonde single coil in the middle, and a Seymour Duncan stacked P90 in the bridge. Part of what makes a stacked P90 special is that it absolutely has the characteristics of a P90, that loud, clear, quacky tone that breaks up with uh, a little bit of amp volume or a little bit of overdrive. But what defines a P90 stack is having a dummy coil underneath that P90 coil, which makes it a noiseless pickup and behave a little bit more like a humbucker. However, as I mentioned earlier, there's a little bit of hidden magic in each position across your five-way blade. So let me take you through what I mean by that. On position five, which is just your stacked P90 in the neck, we've also got a push-pull feature in the volume knob. And so what that allows you to do is drop the dummy coil out of that stacked P90 and it opens it up even more. So that allows you to get back to that standard P90 sound and just get a little broader. It's a subtle feature and you do get a little bit of RF that sneaks in, 
but this is that traditional P90 quacky open thing. And so you get both that modern noiseless P90 and you also get that old school, big loud brash P90. If we move down to position one, which is just the P90 stacked in the bridge, we've got the same feature in the tone knob. So again, you can drop that dummy coil out and you've got that big broad P90 standard. Let's take a look at just the neck P90 stack uh, in position five here and then I'll show you how that coil tap works where we remove the dummy coil and reveal that big broad P90 sound. <laughs> So you can hear how that pickup opens up, becomes a big, broad, traditional P90. You get just a little bit of that RF that has always come with that P90 sound. We'll take a look at the same thing, but in position four, where we've got our neck and our single coil dialed in, and we'll tap that P90, and we'll hear how it does the same thing, but in a subtly different way, because we're dialed into a notch position. Again, having that option just with a tap function is super useful, super versatile. It's one of the many features across this pickup setup. Now, this third knob takes a little bit to explain. So Bob essentially wanted a way to incorporate all three pickups at once on this guitar. As you may know, that's not a standard part of a five-way toggle switch. Typically, you can activate just the bridge, the bridge in the middle, just the middle, the middle in the neck, and just the neck. However, with this guitar, you have the opportunity by rolling off the blender knob to bring in what we call the odd man out. What the odd man out refers to is the pickup that is not inherently a part of the position that you've selected. So let me walk you through what I mean by that. On position five, which is just that stacked P90 in the neck, by rolling off the blender knob, we're actually going to bring in some of the P90 in the bridge. And although it's a subtle feature and a subtle tone change, what that allows you to do is counteract how isolated the pickup that you've selected is. So if you need a little bit more brightness when you're on your neck pickup, you get to bring in some of that bridge and vice versa in position one. Now, the notch positions or what I was referring to earlier when I said Bob wanted to be able to activate all three pickups at once. So let's take position two, for example. Position two typically is just your bridge and your middle single coil. But in this case, if we roll off that blender knob, we're gonna be able to bring in the neck pickup and now all three are activated. This is a super unique sound, a super full sound, and allows you to really dial in a huge variety of tones because you don't have to use the blender knob on just one in ten you can dial in exactly how much you'd like to bring in that odd man out pickup if we're on position one which is just our bridge stacked p90 when we roll off the blender knob we're going to be bringing in the odd man out which in this case is our neck stacked p90 so let's hear how the tone changes <laughs> So you get a little bit of that body and that warmth from the neck pickup, but you're still selected on your bridge P90. And you can dial that into the middle, you can dial in just a little bit. You could always have your blender knob activated so that you're always bringing in a little bit of the odd man out pickup. There are a zillion ways to use it. And although it may seem daunting to have that many options, it's a super simple feature to use, so the world is your oyster. In the notch position, 
as I mentioned earlier, you have an opportunity to activate all three pickups, something you don't typically get and is a super unique sound. Let's take a listen to that. So what's cool about that is you've never had that option before. You don't get to always dial in that third pickup. And in this case, with such a unique pickup configuration in the first place, you have a whole new palette to work with. On position three, it's just the Lawler Blonde middle coil. Part of the reason here is that traditionally, your third pickup position is left alone. It's just your middle single coil. And in this guitar, Bob wanted, quote unquote, a middle pickup that was brighter than a thousand suns. So we went out and found that. We worked with the folks at Lawler, and this blonde ended up being exactly what Bob was looking for. It's just a standard single coil, but it was chosen because it's powerful and it's extra bright, just as Bob wanted. Uh, he refers to the sound as the cold clang of steel, but as I mentioned earlier, there's a zillion places that this pickup can go as well. When we were field testing this, a lot of folks actually found it useful as a solo position, cuts through the mix, has enough weight to it to still carry on, um, and is a super articulate pickup. Let's take a listen. So you can hear that that middle coil retains its body, still a super robust tone, but is articulate and very bright. Blends extremely well with those P90 stacks, both in the stacked position and the tapped as well. When you put this guitar in any artist's hands, they really get to dial in their own thing. And that versatility, that Swiss Army knife feature, was extremely important when we were sort of rethinking how a three pickup, five way toggle should work. All three of these pickups having quite a bold sound and a fair bit of audacity to them uh, is part of the reason why Bob selected each one. They can hold up in really any environment. Uh, part of the conversation that we were having while designing the guitar was, I love a three pickup guitar, I love that five way toggle blade, that standard setup, but sometimes it just can't handle a huge stage, it can't handle producing a huge sound that I want. And each of these pickups has a way to combat that. So obviously the stacks being noiseless in the P90s helps tremendously, and the middle single coil being so hot and bright, all three of them kind of have this armor where they can produce uh, a bigger sound, a bolder sound, and a more controlled sound um, than maybe a standard three pickup single coil model. As we are nearing the end of the design process, uh, getting those electronic features right, having Bob try it on stage. If you look closely at a bunch of uh, Dead & Co footage from the past couple years, you'll see all those variations of this guitar that I'm talking about. Very much a road-tested design. We started talking about those last aesthetic touches that would really make this guitar special. All along, I think the guitar could have been bubblegum pink and Bob wouldn't have noticed because he was just listening to the sound of the electronics. He just wanted to get them absolutely perfect. But as we got closer to the time we wanted to release this guitar, we started talking about how to make it special visually as well. So we brought in that matte stone finish from Bob's original Signature SS. We went with this smoky gray, black pearl pick guard and had matching back plates on the back as well. And that did a really great job of bringing in the cream pickups and the gold hardware. And then of course, because there's always one more sonic addition that you can make to a guitar, we brought in the six-point Wilkinson tremolo system. A huge part of Bob's sound is finishing a phrase and smacking the tremolo real quick and you get that thwang at the end uh, of a sentence. We've got the ebony knobs that are integral to the D'Angelico product line, a Pawfaro fingerboard with mother of pearl and abalone split blocks, and then the traditional D'Angelico headstock undersized for 
uh, the right body to neck balance in the solid body line. Let's take a listen to almost every feature the guitar's got in a specific way. What we're gonna do is go to the tapped position on both of the stacked P90s and we'll be in a notch position where we roll off the blender knob so that all three pickups are active. We'll start in position four, which is our neck and middle, and then we will tap both the neck and the bridge so that we remove our dummy coils so that there's big broad P90s, and then we're gonna roll off our blender knob so that now the bridge pickup is involved as well. With that tone dialed in, you almost get an acoustic sound. Super articulate, still warm, and with those P90s uh, tapped to remove the dummy coil, you get that broad sound with a ton of extra harmonic goodness on there, and it's all carried along well by the weight that the middle pickup still has to it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the Deluxe Bob Weir Bedford or any other D'Angelico product, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or take a look at the product page on Sweetwater.com so that you can check out the tone chart that we made for this particular guitar, walking you through every single electronics option you possibly have. Thanks again.